I am Ankit. I am CTO and co-founder at Signos. First of all, I would like to thank Oasis India for giving me this opportunity to talk to an open source enthusiast audience. So, what we are trying to build at Signos is an open source observability platform. Those who are not very much aware about the domain of observability, what they can think is it's like an APM tool. It's application performance monitoring. Think of a big company who has a lot of backend microservices running, communicating with each other, the queues, the routes, and everything. Whenever there's a bug or the problem or there's a slowdown in the environment, the typical role of a tech lead or the architect, system architect, is to go and debug the system. Right? It's then when such open source tools or such tools or APMs and observability come into play. So this is the brief agenda of what I want to talk today, not focusing very much on what Signos is and what it will be, but like I want to tell like how the journey of Signos began. Or uh, to start, I, I, I started my career back in 2014 uh, as a grad from IIT Delhi. Uh, I joined Citibank, worked for six months, five months. Uh, I did not like being a small dot in a big company. Wanted to have a higher impact. Uh, I thought. Doing a startup was a good way, so I started uh, a startup in the retail tech domain. Uh, it was there that I realized that whenever you start up something, you have to be very much passionate about the domain. Right? So once I got over that startup, I wanted to start something new again, but this time I knew that I have to be passionate about something. And that I found in the tools that are built for developers. So building for developers, understanding developers, and helping developers solve some problems is a case that I'm very curious about. Right. And just before starting Signals, I was handling a team of eight to 10 engineers, had eight, 10 microservices running. Uh, they were usually the cases when the co-founder, the salespersons used to come and say, yeah, so, see, this feature is not working. Probably there is a bug somewhere. Go and find out what is happening. Right. That's a typical use case. Now, my job was to find out that bug exactly where it is. Now, when eight to 10 microservices communicate with each other, it becomes very difficult to spot exactly which host is down or which system is performing poor or has a higher latency. Then I became like, very much interested into figuring out the root cause analysis or doing the root cause analysis of such distributed systems. And it got me interested into this. We Studied the market, saw a lot of number of things coming up. Kubernetes, observability was a very new key term then, like three years back. Uh, I started Signals with a vision to make everything open sourced. Why open sourced? As a developer, I believed any core infrastructure product has to be open sourced. The, every company should not need to innovate back on building something that they have. Right, so that was the vision that I wanted to work with. Just will it work for everyone? I don't think it's full screen, though. The pointers will not work. So that's the brief journey where I come from, why I started Signals, uh, what was happening uh, at the market then. Uh, we applied for Y Combinator. It's a very good uh, startup. Uh, accelerate across the world, like one of the best you can say. We got selected with just an idea, and we started building then. It was like 2019, November. So we are like one and a half years old now. We launched in Jan, and that's how it grew. Now we'll go to why, why open source matters in this domain. Right. So you might have heard a lot of different use cases, OSS being free, and OSS being that, and community and all. Like, OSS does not completely mean to be free. We have seen a trend across U US amongst the, even the YC company, companies that like, if there's an enterprise X, they are replicating a model of open source X, open source alternative to X enterprise solution. Right? And the reasons is not just because it's free, it's more than that. One of the things I would say since observability is a very data heavy platform, like you ingest like millions of events per second into a platform, right? So it, it is very heavy on data. 
So having a complete control on that sort of data is very important as a company. Think of an auditor coming to your company and saying, like, we got a personal credit card number on an email of a person that was not supposed to be in the logs of the application. You're sued. Right? So because of these sort of compliance and security risks that you might be hearing every now and then that things are going bad there, the developer was able to leak into, uh, hack into Slack and Uber, right? So these are the things that you usually hear, like, hear nowadays, right? So OSS gives users complete control to run it inside their own infrastructure. For, for some companies, performance also matters. They do not want to comply with the service level agreements or SLAs that the cloud companies or vendors provide them. They want tighter SLAs, better latencies for their applications so that they are able to debug their systems even faster. So this is when things, uh, OSS even matters then, right? There is, like, when you ingest this huge amount of data into your OSS system, it has huge resource computations needs and storage needs also, right? And the cost goes up very high. Like, if I do not change slide for, let's say, a couple of minutes, so then I think this happens. Okay, anyhow, I think it will come back again to the same page. Uh, yeah, so that, like, now, now there, there are vendors who give libraries and SDKs for things to happen, right? You can put your applications and libraries inside your own applications and you start sending telemetry data and the cloud vendors display a nice UI for it to work. Right. So the problem with that is once you have instrumented your code base with thousands of lines of code that is not your own, Rather, it's a third company's or third party's code. What happens after two to three years down the line? If the vendor asks, quotes you a very large price and you have to move it back to some other vendor, you have to switch to some other vendor, then it becomes engineer, engineer's bandwidth of a couple of months or three months or maybe more to change the code back to some other vendors. Right? So that's when we call like the vendors are logged in into your systems. Check it. So we talked about vendor lock-ins, cost control, uh, open source is so, like, it is, it's part of, you can, it can be part of your own CI/CD pipeline, right? So you can extend open source to your own needs, your own, other, like, pivot, it, you can use it to plug it to your own other systems so that you can have some extendability on the product that you have, right? That is also very much difficult to do with vendors, but it's fantastic to do with an open source product. Now we'll talk about signals like, uh, a few things that we were able to do with Signals is like have Signals as a single pane of glass for of visibility for all the three pillars of observability: metrics, traces, and logs. We have all three of them now. With the choice of the database, that is ClickHouse, which is an analytical database, we now have the power to do very fine filterings of the trace data, and it can do blazing fast analytical capabilities and analytical uh, captures, right? So the aggregations become much faster. As an open source product, we always face a problem with the docs. The docs are not updated. The docs are incomplete. The docs do not support these libraries, these frameworks, and that. That is a, one of the hurdles that we try to remove uh, by being out of the box alternative to any other vendors using OSS. So one of the key focus area can be that. Now, open telemetry is the data generating part. Open telemetry is another very big OSS product uh, or project that is under the CNCF umbrella that is standardizing the process and the frameworks and the libraries and the protocol to generate this sort of telemetry data, the metrics, traces, and logs. And we are trying to be native backend and native open source backend to open telemetry data. Right? And last but not but the least, like you can run your OSS project under your own infrastructure, out of a scope of the network boundaries so that no one can reach into your systems and your data database. Right? Uh, this is how the architecture of Signals looks. We have a couple of more enhancements, but like this is the crude form. The app one, app two, app three, 
are the applications of your own company. You start sending data to open telemetry collector. The collector has three parts, receivers, processors, and exporters. We do some sort of processing, and we export the data and write it to ClickHouse. And as I told you, ClickHouse is the database. Like, ClickHouse is a whole new subject now, but I will brief it down to it's a different kind of database that we do not generally use. It's OLAP analytical or column-oriented database. Now, we have a query service that is written in Go, which reads the data from ClickHouse and exposes some interface and APIs for the front end to display and to have some nice visualizations. Our front end is built in React. Uh, our query service is written in Go. Now you're seeing an a, a orange color blob like S3, like it's object storage from AWS, right? So ClickHouse has a configurability to add S3 as an object storage to retain data for the longer term there. Like you can have tiered storage, like say, I'll store data in my disk for one hour, one day, one month, and after that I will move it to S3, right? It helps you reduce cost. Uh, now, being an OSS, everything is incomplete without a community. These are the traction numbers we have till now. We are more than 7,500 GitHub stars. We have more than 1,200 members in our Slack community. We have around 80 plus contributors across our multiple repos. You can come to Signal's repo, create an issue, talk about subjects. Our Slack channel, our community Slack channel is highly active. If you come there, you can talk to me, our maintainers of Signal's, users across the world. You can find a person sitting in New Zealand, Australia, whether it be China, South Africa, US, Israel, you'll find a mix of people trying to use Signal's and sharing journeys across them, right? So Slack would be a very nice place to get in touch with and work. As I told you, like, uh, we our primary languages are React.js and TypeScript for the front end and Golang for the back end. So just go out to our issues and filter out by label good first issue. Like, these are simple, easy to do issues that we have picked up to be done by first time contributors. So it should help you there. Again, when we talk about community, it does not have to be only developers. I'm thinking and regularly expanding the scope of contributing to an open source project. It can be tests, like you can write tests, you can do manual tests, figure out what is breaking where, you can contribute to docs. As I said, docs are rarely updated. You can write more docs about languages, frameworks, and all. If you're a UI designer, you can suggest us like how UI designs and interactions can be improved in our application. If you are a product manager or a team lead who understands the domain, you can suggest features what can be built and give us important feedback. That's all from me. I am hoping to get a few of you on contributing to Signals and building great products from India. I am always reachable at Ankit at Signals.io. I am also active at uh, Twitter handle at the rate Ankit name. Thank you. If anyone... You get to write code and how does your day-to-day -day work look like at this company? Sure, so like uh, we have a team of around nine, 10 engineers. Most of them I'd say engineers, like eight engineers. Uh, I wrote the Signals code from scratch in a month and a half when we were about to la launch on the international like uh, hacker news. Uh, after that, I have like, when I get to know about a system, how it works and where the code glitches are, I do not usually code. Like, I let my team and the team members, uh, like I say, like one member is doing logs, one is doing metrics, one is taking care of traces. Like, they, I, I try to train them to, so that they can handle all the workload there. They go to community, they take the issues, they uh, also explain to the customers who they also uh, add to the docs. So everything, I, I, my purpose is to enable team members to be like warriors, right? Thank you. Hi. I understand what Signos is. You start heard about. You said uh, like it's about uh, when you are handling multiple microservices, you don't know like which services got down and which services right. up, and so you are managing in that th that thing actually. So from that, I didn't understand like what proper structure you are following to able to solve this problem. So I didn't uh, get this actually. So true. 
So it was not a very in-depth talk about how Signals works. Uh, even I did not have the demo or the screens of there. Like the concept of solving when one request goes through hundreds and thousands of hosts and microservices and queues and everything, a request ID or we generate an ID that, it, uh, that propagates across every request, across every services and it is added in the headers. That's the basic concept of distributed tracing. That request propagates everywhere and the data gets added up from each and every host and every process, right? So distributed tracing is the answer to your question and it is one of the verticals of observability. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Oh, he is here. Hey, just going through uh, Signos. So, Signos is an APM agent, is from what I understood, right? Uh, I would not say an APM agent. Like, like it's an instrumentation agent, which is no, no. also so like. There, there are three parts. Open sure. Telemetry is responsible for generating the data, it's your applications. There are agents that collect those data that are deployed in your infrastructure. There's Signos in, is a cluster that you send data to Signos. Signos stores data, analyzes data, and gives you visualization. I see. So it's like uh, alternative to a or a Jaeger, more than an alternative yes. to an agent. Yes. Fair. Okay.